Hello. Today we're going to be talking about, you know, the IT environment, right? And we're going to look at this, taking into account the overall structure of a company, right? A lot of people ask you, what are you doing? You know, are you getting into IT and all of those good stuff. So let us see why a lot of people now, you know, are getting into the IT field, right? Through this illustration. So I'm going to do a very simple illustration and I'm going to start by looking at a company. Let us assume that this is a company inside this box, right? And uh, you all know, I can you take one example. I'm going to talk about uh, a banking sector. Let's say this is a bank. It's a company. You know, their line of business is, you know, financial. What do they do? They give out loans, you know, uh, you have a savings account. They have, you know, a lot of stuff, right? So when you look at this company, there are various departments that are within this company for it to be able to achieve the goals, right? To meet up with their objectives. So if you just within this company, let us consider all of these little boxes as departments within the company. All of these are departments within this company. Right. If it's a bank, we can start saying here that this is an accounting department. You know, this one is lending. Right. This one is, you know, physical security. Those security guys. A bank can have transportation. A transportation department. They can have customer service. Right. They have customer service. And um, they might have compliance. Right. Compliance. They might have security. Security department within. Okay, so now there are various departments that make up this company. One key thing that I want us to look at is what do these departments need in order to meet up with their task? For example, you see that each department needs workers. They need workers to fit in there, right? The other thing that they will need is definitely computers. They need computers. They need printers. So I'll consider that as hardware. They also need software or applications to be able to do their job. So these departments, you know, you see that they rely a lot on computers, printers, hardware, and of course, networking because for a computer in the accounting department to communicate with a computer that holds databases or lending, you know, there need to be some sort of a network. Right? All of these departments, they need that they, are, they need something very important, which is data. And they need security of that information. So these are every department within that company, they need that. In accounting, you might have two accountants, you might have three. People in the lending services, you know, security, we have two security guides and all of that, right? But now, there is one thing very important that is missing, one department. And that department is the IT department. You see that this IT department is in charge to make sure that each of these various departments can even work. The accountants need computers. The loan guys, they need applications, um, uh, security, you know, everything. They rely on IT. So do you think only one IT person can support all of these departments? No. There are a lot of resources that they need within IT. And some of these are, they need some people to set up the network, manage their databases, secure their data, right? build storage solutions where they're going to be storing their data. So you see that IT is the integral part of every company. So if you are in this IT department, then you know that that company understands your level of responsibility and they know exactly your importance in this company. And that is why they will pay IT personnel more. And there is always a need for IT personnel. So now let us look at this. This is a company in general. 
this IT department itself, that is an integral part of every company, you know, is also split up into various teams or various uh, disciplines within IT. Because not one person can protect data, set up a network, uh, set up security and all of that. So this IT department now, which I'm going to put it right here, that is our IT department, right? So the IT department now is also made up of various teams. These are teams within the IT, right? Look at all of these circles as the teams that make up your IT department. So some of those, some of those teams you are looking at here, it could be your networking team, the cyber security, right? The infrastructure, right? You have uh, developers, you have engineers, you have system administrators, you have help decks, and all of this. These are the teams now that help to make up that IT department. So you see that just within the IT department, you can have various teams. And anything that you do around IT, you always look for a way to fit in to a company. You always have a job. So now, one thing in common that every department here and every department that I have in the company they have is data. Let me put that in black. One thing in common they have is data, right? You see that these departments rely on these teams within IT. And all of these teams within IT rely on the data. So data here now tells you that it is the integral part of the most valuable asset of every company. That is what data is the most valuable asset of every company. So if you are getting into the IT field and you're starting with a career that is linked to data management, you are definitely doing the right choice. You're definitely taking the right choice, taking the right decision because data is that integral part of every company. So why is it that way? Just take for instance, if YouTube, if they just go to YouTube today, they delete all videos, all the the recordings that they have there, they are gone. If you go to a bank like this, you get into their database, you add zeros in front of every person's uh, saving account. What happens? They are gone. You know, things are going to be screwed up. So every company values data. So if you have understanding around managing data, then you can always fit into any team within IT very easily. Data resides on a computer. So for you to understand data, you must understand computer. Someone that does infrastructure, really don't really, he does not really need to understand how data is processed. He just builds his VMs and he is gone. He just provisions storage and he is gone. You, the storage that is provisioned is for used to host the database. And you definitely can get into that and also learn more if you are dealing with data. So just with data in every company, there are a lot of things that you can do. You can be a DBA, a database administrator, which also have a lot of various subcategories. You can be a traditional DBA, just searching up higher availability, disaster recovery solutions. You might decide to go into more performance tuning. You can decide to go into data warehousing. You can decide to go into Azure data lakes and big data analytics. That is what you do. Also, if you are not a DBA, you can be data analyst, where you take this data, you analyze it to help the company make informed decisions. You can be a data engineer, where you define the process in which how this data gets here and how it can be transitioned into a data warehouse for decision making. You can be a data scientist. So you see that just by you starting as a DBA, there are a lot of potentials that you gain in the IT field. Right. So if you are considering to start a career in IT, I will encourage you that look around here because there are a lot of opportunities when it comes to data. And that is because data is the most 
valuable asset of every company. So think about it. Reach out to us, 210-993-7190 or joinitsolutions.com. You know, we can help you on what route to take. Again, we normally offer free two weeks training in computer basics and making you understand the IT environment and why you should get into that IT environment. So reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to help you. Again, thank you. This is Brian at Joint IT Solutions.